everyone. I'm Carly. This is Zudi Virtual Safari. It is Wednesday. We have a really hot, sunny, beautiful day here in Denver. And I always try to get you guys to guess where I am in the zoo. And sometimes an animal blows up my spot and gives it away, but I think I'm pretty safe right here. So if anyone wants to try to guess of those first early birds who are always so quick to log on, like Abby or Xander, um, just let me know if you can guess. I think the sound might give it away too. Who knows? But I'll definitely show you in a minute. Uh, hi, Addison. Uh, so I'm here with our keeper, Brittany, and she is a bird keeper, if that's any guess. Hi, Elma. Hi, Shauna and Jack. Hi, Xander. I knew you'd be there. So I'm just going to turn it over to Brittany and kind of show you where I am today. So thank you all. All right, Whitney, I know the description says flamingo, but not everyone reads it. So yeah, I'm at the flamingo pond. Hi, Lala. Yes, I am at the flamingo pond. All right, y'all guessed it. Y'all read the post. So this is Brittany. She'll be answering your questions about flamingos today. And here they are. So we're actually on the pond or kind of on the beach side of the pond. And there's the entrance to Primate Panorama. So the birds are a little noisy, so we'll do our best to speak up. Make sure you all can hear us. Uh, right there in the center, walking towards us cautiously, is our youngest Swift. Um, so is he a Chilean or American flamingo, Brittany? Swift is one of our Chilean flamingos. He was hand raised this past fall in 2019, and he is very, very friendly. So. Um, he might continue to approach us as we uh, get going here talking about pink crazy chickens. Yes, <laughs> pink crazy chickens. I love that. Um, yep, Madison. Hi, Josiah and Zechariah. So we have two species of uh, flamingos in our flock. Uh, who do we have? That's correct. We have a total flock of flamingos totaling 77 birds. But we have two different species of flamingos. You can tell them apart just by looking at them. The lighter pink flamingos are Chilean flamingos found in um, the South American region, Argentina, Chile, um, even Peru. Um, and they live in high altitude, believe it or not, um, in the Andean mountains. And these guys can withhold, uh, withstand some pretty cold temperatures. Um, our other species of flamingo are the American flamingo. They're the dark salmon, beautiful, uh, rich pink colored birds. They are found in the Caribbean uh, region of the world. So Bahamas, um, there's a huge flock in the Yucatan area. So flamingos like to be together. The more the merrier, safety in numbers. And so we're able to manage both of these species together as one giant flock. So we have 77 birds. Wow. So someone asked if we have babies. Swift, is le Swift and Legend are less than a year old, aren't they? That's correct. So for those of you that were following our uh, hand-reared Chilean flamingos from last year, they are um, with us today. You can see Swift right here. Legend is poking his head out way, way in the back over there. Um, so they are what we consider juveniles now. They're not really babies. I personally think that they're still babies, um, but they are considered juveniles. They're still under a year. Um, but the good news is we did get our first egg of the summer laid this morning. So uh, I don't know if Carly can show you. On the island out there, there's birds sitting on mounds. Those birds built their nests out of mud and we got uh, an egg this morning. So oh. we're gonna hope for the best for that. I'm gonna zoom in right here, that kind of middle mound right there, that's that type of nest. Yep, that's exactly a great example. So there it is. And that light pink, everyone asking how you can tell them apart, light pink is the Chilean, and the darker salmon-y one like that is the American or Caribbean. Correct. And here is and here Swift. Swift. He's a Chilean, he doesn't have his pink yet, and why is that? So when flamingos hatch out of their egg, they are all white and as they grow and as they get bigger they slowly get that pink color in it takes about four years for baby flamingos to reach their full pinkness so since swift is only um what eight months old or something like that uh nine months um he still has some pink growing to do i don't know if you can tell but on his wings and on his back he still has little little snippets of pink feathers that are coming in so that is, just means he's maturing and growing. And many of you know, uh, flamingos get their coloration from their diet. So the food that they eat is what turns their feathers this pink color. 
Very cool. So it takes a while. I didn't know it took that long for them it does. to get that pink. Birds grow so fast. They do. The baby stage is so fast. It's in so birds. quick. Yeah. I think I missed one of my chances to see Swift when he was just a little cotton ball of yeah. fluff. <laughs> and then I came back and he's a little bit more gray, a little bit more pinky. <laughs> but he is so, so super cute. He is very cute. Um, just a lot of people saying they love flamingos here. What's your favorite part about flamingos? My favorite part about flamingos is kind of figuring out their puzzle. We've got 77 birds who all interact in different ways. They have got friends, they've got enemies, they've got frenemies, they've got siblings, they've got um, all kinds of different relationships. And it's up to the keepers, like myself, to piece together the information that they tell us through their behavior. And I just really love that challenge of working with flock species and getting to learn their personalities. Um, and this time of year, you can, like right over here, this group of Chileans, they're hanging out in pairs. There's two standing to each other, two again. So time after time, you get to know the behavior these guys are gearing up for the breeding season. Very cool. It's like high school. It's like high school. <laughs> Prom yes. season. Lots of fighting. <laughs> are they territorial? You know, yes, but their territory only exists around their body space. So it's kind of like uh, arm's length around them. That's what they defend. It's not that they're ter territorial in a sense where they're defending a land mass or something that you would traditionally think of um, like a male elephant or something. Um, but they are territorial to their personal space and to their mates and anything that's in uh, arm's reach, like food or resources like nesting material, other things like that. Yeah. Uh, Debbie wants to know when do flamingos lay their eggs and when do they hatch? So it's different for both the species. Usually here our American flamingos lay eggs first, earliest in the season. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, we got our first one this morning. Um, the Chileans are a little bit behind in the um, reproduction process, so they are they will move into the island probably within the next month or so. So their timing is a little bit off, but it's actually perfect because it's a better way to see and observe what the birds are doing. Yeah, it's okay. kind of hard to tell around that they, kind of bush right there, but that little battering of, of bright pink, orangey, those are the Americans on the nesting mound. Yes. You can see the Chileans aren't quite, They're quite ready as interested to get on yet. there. Yeah. Um, and that's and then, a little flock of geese right there, yeah, if you're wondering. Then, um, and then so the second part of your question was how long does it take to hatch? The flamingo eggs usually hatch in about 28 days on average, and the male and the female share incubation duties, which is really special in the bird world. Um, so it makes me kind of proud to watch them like, as a team. <laughs> yes. Chani um, wants to know, theoretically, if you fed them blue food, would they slowly turn blue? Do you know, so many people ask me that, and I wish that were true. I would have purple flamingos and polka dot flamingos and paisley flamingos, but it only works with pink. The actual... Um, pigment that is found in their food which is found in krill and shrimp and some species of algae it's called a carotenoid it's the same thing that makes carrots orange so by eating this they continuously ex um, are processing this pigment inside their bodies and it is expressed outward in the form of their of their feathers if you see a flamingo who is not pink it typically means that they are not eating, so they're not maintaining that constant intake of that carotenoid. A lot of times um, in the wild, you'll see uh, flamingos who aren't as pink, but there's a lot of things in the wild that wild flamingos have to worry about, like lack of resources, lack of food, competition, et cetera, et cetera. Flamingos at the zoo are perfect indicators of health because we have a special diet for them. Absolutely. Uh, Kay wants to know what their lifespan is. That is another great question. Um, the estimates for wild birds are about 30 to 40 years old. In a zoological setting with a healthy diet and veterinary care, we have birds that get, can live up into their 80s. <laughs> Swift is just being so brave over here. He's kind of chatting with the, the geese he really is. who like to find refuge on this island because there's a lot of food available to them. Maybe he'll come say hi. Uh, do they mate for life? Uh, flamingos do tend to be monogamous, but just there's always exceptions to that rule. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Bree is five. She wants to know, can the flamingos escape? They cannot. <laughs> Number one that keeps them um, in the exhibit is their desire to be together. We talked about safety and numbers and living in large flocks. That's what flamingos prefer. So for one to venture off on his own is pretty rare. 
Um, number two, we have plantings that b block their uh, surroundings and it makes them feel comfortable in here as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, Elise wants to know what features do you use to tell them apart? Because I have been in here and <laughs> bird keepers can be like, oh, that's Freddie and that's Lance. And I'm like, it looks just like a flamingo to me. Right, right. <laughs> so, I have worked with the flamingos for 13 years now, so I've spent a lot of time and a lot of years uh, developing relationships with these birds as well as getting to know their physical differences. And when you spend that much time with them, you start to notice how the minute little ways that they look different. Maybe it's freckles on their face, or maybe ha one has an old wing injury that's healed now but has left it a little... Um, you know, sits a little different. Maybe it is the color of their um, beak at the very tip or a scar that they have underneath their eye. You really just get to know these birds um, and, and recognize uh, them as individuals, which is a really magical thing to be part of. Yeah, and then for more practical purposes, for the newer yes. people, um, there are bands Correct. on them. Each, all of our 77 birds have individual bands, so no band, or no two bands are alike. Their uh, unique color and number combination, and they sit right on their legs so that we can see them from a distance. So we said there's definitely a lot of inter interbird interpersonal drama that can go on. Oh, is there a no um, <laughs> is there like a, a hierarchy? Is there a head bird in charge? Uh, there are definitely more dominant birds and uh, more submissive birds, um, and that comes a, comes into play a lot w uh, when the food is around. Also. Um, uh, if, if the flamingos will sense danger, if you've ever seen that, they will huddle up in a big mass. And the more dominant birds will push their way to the middle, and the more submissive ones will have to be on the outside. Well, if there's danger around, where would you want to be? Yeah. So the hierarchy thing does come into play in a, in a lot of different ways. Ethan has a great question, which I was going to ask next, because we can see Swift doing it over <laughs> here. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> why do they stand on one leg often? Great question, Ethan. I get this question all the time. Um, you know what? The, the true answer is science just doesn't know, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of great theories. Um, number one, it's kind of a shifting of the weight. Even we as humans do it. We've got two legs just like flamingos. If we're standing for long periods of time, you kind of shift your hips and give one of your legs a break. Um, so that's kind of the most commonly accepted theory, but there's a lot of fun ones too. These guys are predators of small invertebrates like krill and shrimp. If you've got one leg in the water, you might uh, be mistaken for a tree or a bush or something, and these little invertebrates might be more likely to swim by. Also, another uh, theory that's gaining speed is thermoregulation. If your leg is up close to your chest, just like Swift is demonstrating here, you're conserving body heat. In turn, you have your body, you're expending less energy, and in turn, have to eat less. Interesting. So lots of cool theories. Can they be on that for a really long time? They could do it all all day, all night. They sleep like this, um, 24 hours, no problem. Instead of taking a nap? Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of peeking his head out. He's like, he sees us. He's oh, like, oh, I'm napping, but I'm keeping an eye on you, and I'm showing off for the camera. We have an adorable video of Swift enjoying some snow on our YouTube video on our YouTube channel if you want to check that out. He had a blast. Got a lot of exercise this winter out in the snow because the Chileans, they do live at high altitudes, so they can withstand some colder temperatures. Correct. Just like we talked about, the natural range of the Chilean species is high altitude in the Andean mountain range. So these guys uh, are used to um, colder temperatures or can tolerate colder temperatures. Um, in the wild, Chilean flamingos will freeze into the lakes at nighttime with the freezing temperatures in the wild, and they will have to wait for the sun to come out the next morning to thaw the lake so that they can fly away in search of food. So these guys really can tolerate some extreme um, uh, temperatures and conditions. Yeah. Hi, Debbie. One of our sloths, Charlotte Greeny, is in the indoor flamingo exhibit right now. Um, the other two are in different parts of the zoo. Luke and Lydia want to know what are flamingos' predators? Uh, you know, it depends on what species we're talking about, but in general, um, in general, flamingos don't have a ton of predators. Um, because of their ties to the water and because of the way that they nest, uh, they kind of are protected by the water from a lot of the terrestrial predators. We see um, 
in the wild we've seen um, aerial <laughs> predators such as owls or in Africa like big storks or something that will eat eggs. Also, flamingos are most susceptible to predation when they're sitting on eggs and, and rearing chicks. So, um, but honestly, I, I, I feel it's important to um, tell everyone that man is, and our, and our effects on, um, on the planet, has really uh, threatened these guys um, just because of water quality and, and habitat loss. And so it's the same, same story as as a lot of the species on the planet, but um, our, our uh, impact on the planet is the biggest detriment to the flamingos. Yeah, human, human, um, human animal conflict, habitat loss, yes. resources, those have caused a lot of animals to lose a lot of their natural, natural spaces. And here comes Legend, our I'm other really juvenile. Hard. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> it took him a while, come here, come but he didn't away. want to be shown up by Swift. Do he and Swift get along? Uh, for the most part, they do. Legend, you make me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> he is so cute. So he's got, you can see he's got a little bit more pink than his his other juvenile That's friend. True. So he's about one month older than Swift. Um, so he does have a little more pink um, on his backside. And you can see the pink coming in right underneath his eyes, like on his bill too. Yeah, oh, we can he's get coming. really close. He's coming right up. He'll make a great encounter bird. <laughs> I feel like the geese are causing a little bit of a ruckus in the Hi. pond right now. Oh, oh. oh. Legend loves Legend. Brittany. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alex is wondering, are their knees backwards? Excellent question and great observation. But the answer to that question is no. So this portion of their leg here is actually their ankle. So from this uh, ankle joint down, that's their entire foot. So their foot is vertical and their knees bend the right way, just like uh, human knees. They're just tucked up next to their chest and covered by feathers. You just can't see it. Very, um, very prominent that these look like uh, knees for sure. <laughs> um, how big is a flamingo egg, Amelia wants to know. Uh, I, I don't know, probably, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. I'd say about maybe four inches long mm -hmm. and maybe two, two and a half across. So pretty large. I mean, four times a chicken egg at least. Yeah, a lot bigger than the eggs you buy at the store. True. And talk about what we sometimes do, taking the eggs out of the nest and incubating them and why we do that. Right. So when, when the egg is left out here, there's a lot of factors that could threaten the egg and the growing chicken side, right? Um, weather is one. Uh, we can have some inclement weather here in, in the early summer months uh, with hail. Um, also, inexperienced parents is another thing. Um, so what we have done in the past is taken the flamingo egg um, and replaced it with a, a wooden dummy egg. So a, a, an egg that is a replica made out of wood. And the parents will then sit on that thinking no different that this is their egg. Well, in the meantime, we have a special team of people who um, <laughs> take the egg, put it in an incubator, monitor it very closely for uh, the 28 day incubation period and um, ensure the hatchability of the chick. Um, and then in the past, what we've done is when the chick hatches in the incubator, we bring the chick back to its parent, grab that <laughs> fake dummy egg and uh, place the chick underneath the parent. And, and they're none the wiser. <laughs> they're like, oh my gosh, a baby. A baby. It's here, and that really helps us ensure that we can get a viable egg and a, a chick out here um, so that we can keep growing this amazing flock. Uh, Cindy says she loves how much she's learning right now. Oh, good. And I think one thing we haven't talked about is the unique uh, mechanism that flamingos use to eat. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. So maybe you can get a zoom in on legends. <laughs> He's like, no. So flamingos have, uh, they're, they're what we call filter feeders, right? They've got this downward curved bill and each upper and lower mandible is lined with a tooth-like, uh, comb-like structure called lamellae. Um, this is the, the mechanism that helps the bird in their filter feeding process. And uh, there's a bird eating right over here by this tub. Um, granted, he's gonna grab a pellet and um, put it in the water. But essentially, they are able to filter out pieces of food from the water source um, using their specialized beak and tongue. Very cool. So that helps them get the food, but then the water gets, goes back out. So yep. they're not just drinking a ton of water with Correct. all their food. Yep. And <laughs> another cool flamingo fact is 
Um, they're one of those species of birds that can swallow while upside down. So they don't have to raise their head every time that they need to take a swallow of food or water. Um, they can do it all while their heads are upside down, um, which is all created possible by their unique shaped tongue. I wish I could do that so I could eat more in bed. <laughs> that would be really fun. Uh, Davis is three. He wants to know where Legend's mommy is. Um, Legend's mommy, she lives in our flock out here. Um, but Legend was hand raised by the bird keepers um, because of some um, cold weather that happened at the end of last fall. Um, and because of the weather, the flamingos had to come inside and uh, there wasn't a good chance to be able to let Legend's parents um, attempt to take care of him. So that's when the zookeepers become really important because we were able to step in, save Legend, save Swift back here, and um, raise up two healthy birds. Yes, and Davis, he'll turn pink at about full full pink around four years. Yep. Um, but you can see Davis, he already has some of those pink feathers and like light tipped pink right here. It's actually very beautiful up close how they have that sort of brown, white, gray, pink mixture there. So that's a great question, Davis. And um, Michaela wants to know how many flamingos we have that hatch every year. Uh, it varies every year just based on success um, and fertility. Um, last year we had these two. Um, the year before, I don't think we had any. And the year before that, I think there were several, maybe three to five. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on, on the year and uh, the success. Yeah. Here comes Legend. Oh! Someone just asked, do they ever bite or peck, and is it, you know, does it hurt? <laughs> right. So Legend is uh, is really used to people, so he's being uh, very sweet, right, because he's he's not fearful. Um, some of the other birds can be fearful, um, and if they do bite you, it, uh, it kind of feels like a pinch and a twist. So yeah, it, it hurts like a pinch. <laughs> but uh, one of the cool things I love to tell people is birds don't have teeth. No birds have teeth. So... They can't, when they bite you, it's not like um, uh, a bite that would, you would feel from something with uh, teeth. Yeah, so it's definitely, I've, I've been snapped at yes. while we've, um, we move these flamingos out one by one every year uh -huh. from their indoor to their outdoor. And I try to film it. And sometimes when they're getting their feet checked and all that, I've gotten a little, you know, little neck swipe and yep. a little bite from, from these guys, but it doesn't hurt too bad. And the birds, someone asked, are they easily scared? They are yes. easily scared, yes. <laughs> so we came in here a little bit early and got kind of seated and got comfortable. comfortable. Yes, and then they, they all ran away at first, and now they're kind of more comfortable coming back towards us. Uh, Tiffany wants to know, do you think it'll be an adjustment for them when people are back at the zoo? Since, But they've been inside most of our closure. Uh, yes, that's true. You know what? Flamingos happen to be extremely resilient to... Um, things going on around their exhibit. Um, as many of you know, the, the Denver Zoo train runs right behind the flamingo exhibit and they don't care about that at all. They're just used to it and they accept it. It doesn't bother them at all. So I don't foresee any problems with them um, getting used to people being back here at the zoo. In fact, we're all looking forward to it. Yeah, we are. Um, hi, Brittany. So yeah, no, the question is the zoo is not open. Uh, we have posted some updates about where we stand with our reopening, but um, trust me, you all will not miss it when we <laughs> announce that we are reopened. We won't let anyone, anyone who's interested will know that we are open. Um, let's see. Oh, there was a good question. Oh, is there a max to the flock? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a, a large enough outdoor and indoor space to house our current flock and some additional uh, babies if we're lucky to get them too. So no, no max. Uh, yeah, no max. Yeah. We have plenty of room. And at the rate where we go, where it's sort of like average one a year. Yes. Because like, you know, we're not worried about all of a sudden going to several hundred. So Swift is telling the geese, to, you know. Good job, He's Swift. that personal space. He's like, stay a, a wings span away yep, from me exactly. and I'm okay. Um, so Michelle wants to know how old is Legend directly Legend in front of us. hatched in October, uh, uh, yes, October of last year. So what does that make him? Nine months? October? Uh, eight? Eight months. Yeah. And then Swift is just a couple weeks behind. Um, so he hatched at the, uh, 
beginning of November. Okay. So they're pretty, very, very close in age. But as we all know, March and April were about two years That's long. True. So in flamingo years, yeah. were about 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see. There was another good question on here. Oh, are they good flyers? Like, what is the sort of flight distance a flamingo can get up to? You know what? Flamingos are extremely proficient flyers. Um, they can fly at high altitudes. Um, they can fly for long distances. Um, and, and interesting, this, this would be totally worth a YouTube video search or a Google search because they fly with their legs directly out behind them. So they've got these big, huge, pink, beautiful wings, and their legs are directly behind them. They kind of look like pink, like pencils flying through the air. <laughs> and, uh, they are very good at flying and landing, very graceful. So we, we have Chilean and American here at the zoo, but we've also done work with lesser flamingos in South Africa. Um, <laughs> who are those birds getting really That's loud? the red crown cranes. Oh. So who you're hearing right now are the red crown cranes. What do you think they're vocalizing about? <laughs> Who only knows? Maybe they got excited to see their keeper or... <laughs> um, let's see. Lisa said, do they have an alpha like dog packs do? Not necessarily, but there are some that are dominant, they're you said. Correct. Um, oh, Ella wants to know, we always talk about enrichment. Do we provide these guys enrichment? So uh, a lot of times, um, interactions with the keeper is enrichment. Um, we also do, uh, you probably can't see it from here, but we have, you can't. Um, it's like oh. a floating little decoy duck. Oh. Um, and we just push that thing out on the pond and let it float around and it just, their just minds have to um, work around. What is that thing? Um, we also, uh, the other day we um, blew bubbles, like bubbles like a little kid would play with and we just um, blew them and uh, let, the, let the babies, uh, flamingos, look at them. We've also done like dive sticks and dive rings. Um, sometimes flamingo enrichment is as simply as a upside down tub and they just, like if we had to turn this upside down and then one of them could stand on it and they would be taller than their friends and they yeah. would think that was the coolest thing ever. They don't really have toys <laughs> uh, the way like kind of other, yeah, they other enrichment animals. They do a sprinkler though, like I'll turn the sprinkler on oh, the yeah. hose and they absolutely love that. Um, hi Patricia, these are flamingos from South America and the Caribbean, so American and Chilean. Um, in Africa, you've, you're probably seeing the lesser flamingo. And the greater flamingo. And the greater yep, flamingo. Two species in Africa. Hi Harry, we actually do have SARS cranes and you might be seeing them this week on our virtual safari, so stay tuned. Um, let's see, um, hi Debbie, you can go to our website and look into volunteering possibly. Um, if you're a teen, you can start volunteering, uh, look into internships. Um, not sure exactly what you're looking for. So Michaela wants to know after flamingos hatch, do they eat shrimp and, or krill right away or do they usually, or what do they eat right after they Great hatch? Great question. So when they're so tiny like that, their parents are feeding them by regurgitating what we call a crop milk. And it's a, it's a, a yeah. high protein rich substance that the parents produce inside their bodies and they regurgitate it to their chicks. So they are getting some of that carotenoid from the color like right off the bat. However, they're not eating on their own and it, it happens pretty quickly, maybe about two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do we, what do we do when we're hand rearing a chick then? So we feed them um, the closest thing that we can um, to that crop milk which is a high protein liquid diet. Um, we feed it in a syringe, so it's liquidy, and then um, we would put the syringe right up to the, to the chick's mouth, and he would just start swallowing it down, uh, just like to, to replicate what the parents would be doing. Legend is so chatty today. He is very chatty. <laughs> he has a lot to say, and Swift is now back sleeping, back sleeping. But, on, but on both legs. <laughs> do, do you notice, I mean, have you ever spent enough time watching to see if they prefer to stand on one leg or the other? Uh, that is an interesting question. So, um, yes, there is a whole scientific study, behavioral study, um, it's called laterality, and it basically is like left or right preferences. So it also applies to neck resting. So flamingos oftentimes will sleep like this with their neck behind tucked on their back, but which way they do it will indicate what preference they have. Humans have this as well. Are you right hand dominant? Are you left hand dominant? So it's called laterality and it does come down to preferences, um, and which is a very interesting subject to me. Yeah, so females are about 20% smaller than males. <laughs> Legend just got mad at the phone. He did. All that moves. All right.
Calm down. Oh, that is so funny. Um, are there any other kind of quick visual ways to tell differences between the male and the females? Typically, not always, but typically males are taller and a little bit larger. Um, that's not always a surefire way, but for you guys, when you come um, back to the zoo, when we are open, swing by the flamingo flock. A quick way to tell males apart from females is by the bands on their leg. So males will always be banded on the right leg, females always banded on the left leg. And uh, both Legend and Swift are males, so they're banded on the right leg. So for you guys out there, uh, avid flamingo fans or bird watchers, um, it's a quick, quick, quick way for everyone to see the difference between the sexes. Yeah, I'm gonna do my last call for questions. Get your last few in here. We've answered things like their lifespan and where they are and who, how to tell them apart. Legend, is, Legend has some things he'd like to say as well. I don't want to make direct, direct eye contact. Uh, hi, Joanne. We do not know when we're opening. It's not up to us, but we are waiting patiently for the go-ahead because we really want to welcome, welcome you all back. I think it's so interesting that their ankles are pink too. Yep. Um, and like, like, look at using these babies for example. Um, they will gain that pink ankle well as they mature. Um, but pretty much everything about a flamingo is pink. Uh, everything down to uh, the yolk inside their egg. Uh, when you crack open a chicken egg, yolk is yellow, right? Well, flamingo egg, it's pink. Oh, really? Everything about these birds is just pink, 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 and I love it. Tani <laughs> uh, wants to know: Is Legend being so vocal because he's happy, or? mad or what's he going is on definitely happy he is interacting with us and he's curious about the phone he's curious about your badge here yep. and our shoelaces and uh yes he's being he's very happy right now when he grabbed onto my little bobble hair thing it's like a real vibration yes that's that's what it is like to filter feed yeah that's so cool. oh you're filter feeding on my arm now yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, hi, Angela. We cannot wait for you and your kids to come back either. Um, definitely sign up for our email list so you can be one of the first to find out when we make that announcement. Um, but trust me, you all will not will not miss the reopening announcement. I promise you. Uh, Bevan wants to know how far they can fly in a day. I'm sorry? How far they can fly in oh, a day. Okay. Um, you know, that really kind of depends. Um, say, legend. Um, in the wild, uh, in Africa, for example, um, there are birds that have um, been noted to fly from South Africa all the way up the continent and land in Kenya. So they can fly very far if, if they so desire. Yeah. Usually it's shorter distances, so that's pretty extreme. <laughs> Luke wants to know which flamingo is your favorite, Brittany. I don't want to say that because they'll hear me and uh, that might hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> Don't tell the others. If Anton's watching, he Anton. is laughing. <laughs> Cindy wants to know, do they migrate? You know, flamingos do not migrate in the traditional sense of the word. Like, for example, uh, robins or other birds around Denver. They come here in the spring, they uh, spend the summer months, and then they take off for the, the, the colder months and fly south for the winter. Flamingos are more... Um, what we call nomadic. So what that means is because of their specialized feeding adaptations, they're very, very closely tied to their habitat niche. They can't really go far from their correct and appropriate habitat because that's where their food source is. Um, so migration isn't really a true uh, thing that flamingos do, but they will circulate around a range um, nomadic looking for food. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Hopefully that answers your question. Imagine. Um, so, Michaela, when you're here at the zoo, you can tell our different breeds of flamingos by the Chileans are the lighter pink and the Americans are going to be that much more vibrant, salmon -y, like hot pink orange. Uh, krill here. So they get a nice fun diet. It's really stinky when we put it out here and <laughs> really stinky when we prepare the food. So kind of the life of a keeper it's true <laughs> so i think that's all the questions we got um thank you to lucas um i really appreciate all the awesome questions and comments um it's so fun to do these and it was so fun to finally do flamingos now yeah. that they're out on the on the island it took us a little bit longer than normal to get them out here this year because of the coronavirus and having to delay vet things like that so 
definitely definitely excited that they're out here and when you all return they will be here for you to view and really soak in their beauty and now hopefully you've learned some new things about them and you can tell your friends and your kids and impress them when you come visit <laughs> so thank you so much to Brittany thank you guys she is me. the flamingo whisperer with all the info so we really appreciate it um, have a great rest of your week and we'll be back here tomorrow bye everyone